Okay, in this video, we're going to do the classic birthday problem. And the birthday problem goes like this. What is the probability that somebody in a group of people, somebody shares a birthday with at least one other person? So when you're taking a look at a group of people, and right here I got a classroom of 17. What is the probability that somebody, it could be anybody, it could be like this person, what's the probability that she shares a birthday with, you know, him or probability that she shares it with that guy or the probability that this person back here shares it with her and then maybe him. In fact, the the question's really asking what's the probability that anyone in this group shares a birthday with somebody else? Now here's the thing is that there's a lot of different possibilities. There's one, here's another, he could share it with this girl back here, she can share it with everybody in the front row. I mean there's a lot of possibilities. In fact that is a very bad way of trying to approach this problem. So another way, a better way, would be to look at this problem and look at its complement. So let's take a look at the sample space. All right, the sample space can be represented by a big rectangle. Now I'm going to split this sample space into two, and over here, these are going to be all the people that share a birthday. All right, as long as they share a birthday with somebody or anybody, all right, you're over here. So who's over here? This would be the area that represents all of the, the possibilities where nobody shares. So which one is easier to find? Is it this one, finding the probability that you share a birthday with someone else? Anybody shares a birthday with anybody else. Or this one, the probability that no one shares with anyone. In fact, it's actually this one that's easiest to find. So we're going to focus our attention on first finding the probability that no one shares a birthday. Because once we figure out that, let's call this um, the event E. Okay, the event, let me write that down here, E, which is no one shares. Then to answer our question, what's the probability that someone shares, which is in here, that's just going to be 1 minus the probability of E, because these are complements. So once you find the probability that no one shares, subtract it from 1, and we'll find the probability that somebody shares with somebody. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to, instead of doing all 17 people right here, because that's going to take a little bit of time, and I'd like to develop the kind of the, the formula. First we'll see the pattern, then we'll make the formula, and then we'll answer our final question using these 17 people. So let's start small. And let's use five students. So of a group of five, what's the probability that one of them shares a birthday? So here are five students. Now, when you look at your first student, what how many ways can she have a birthday where she shares with no one else? Well, She's the first person in our list, so she has 365 available birthdays because right now there's no one else that she can share with. Now when you move on to the second student or the second group or a uh, second person in the group, well, say for example her birthday was January 2nd. I'll just put J2. If her birthday was January 2nd, he can't have that birthday. So how many birthdays does are available for him? 364. So for the sake of argument, let's say his birthday was October 5th. So I'll put 05. Well, if two these two birthdays have been taken, then when you go to the third person in this group, then she only has 363 available birthdays because she can't have October 5th and she can't have January 2nd. So say she has July 3rd. So you go on to the fourth person well, now there are three birthdays that she cannot have, so there are 362 birthdays that she could possibly have. So let's say hers is June 28th. And then on the last student, our fifth person in the group, well, there are four birthdays he can't have, so right now there are 361. And we can say his birthday, I mean, it really doesn't matter right now, but we'll say it's like December 15th. So each one of these are tasks. So if I wanted to know the number of ways no one shares a birthday, then you would just multiply up all of these and it would give me the total number of possibilities. So the number of ways 
would be, so it would be 365 times 363, oops, sorry, 364 times 363 times 362 times 361 and so on. Now if you've been following along with some of these videos, this might look somewhat familiar to you and it kind of looks like a factorial. Okay. So yeah, let's let's write that out. 365 factorial. But you know what? It's not quite 365 factorial because if you remember, 365 factorial then involves 360 times 359 times and you would just keep multiplying all of those numbers down until you get to 1. Well, I don't have those. Right? So if if I'm not supposed to have these, then what we're going to do is we're just going to divide them out. So then we divide by 360 factorial. And by dividing that, we don't have these anymore. So they disappear. Now maybe you see this, maybe you don't, but we can rewrite this as 365 factorial divided by 365 minus uh, 5 factorial. Now why do we do that? Let me rewrite this. Well, how many students did we have? We had five students. What's this number right here? It's five. All right. This is going to have. This is this is help useful because we're going to use this in the formula later. This number is going to represent the number of people in your group. Well, maybe you recognize this formula. If not, let me write it out. This is the NPR formula. It's the number of permutations. So N being 365 and R being five. So let me rewrite that as 365 P5. All right, so we have that many ways of having five people with no one sharing a birthday. Now, if you try putting this into the calculator, you're going to get an overflow. Most calculators will give you an overflow. So we got to, right now, we'll just leave it that way. Um, Actually, with this one, you won't have an overflow, but it will give you a number in scientific notation. Uh, I think when we do it with 17 people, it will give us an overflow. But right now, this would give us just a very, very large number. All right, but we're working with probability. And we found that the event of no one sharing a birthday can happen this many ways. Well, if probability, you would take the number of ways, which is right here, and you divide it by the total number of possible birthdays we can have. So let's look at the sample space. Now when trying to figure out the total number of possible birthdays, you have to remember that now we don't care if they share a birthday. They can share a birthday. Maybe no one does. Maybe some of them do. I don't care at this point. And so when you look at the first person in this group right here, how many possible birthdays can she have? Well, 365. How about the second person? Well, it's also 365, because again, I don't care if he shares. And this, uh, this student right here, she could have 365, so can she, and so can he. Again, any one of them can have any one of the 365 birthdays. So the total number of possible birthdays, and again, these are all tasks now, you would multiply all, uh, all five of these together. So 365 times 365, and you do this five times. But you know what? Because eventually I want to find a formula. I want a nicer way of writing this. So a nicer way of writing 365 times itself five times, we would write 365 to the fifth power. Okay, so let's summarize what we have. So the number of ways anyone can share a birthday, we found that to be 365 P5. And the total number of possible birthdays, we found 365 to the fifth. So now the probability that no one shares is going to be the number of ways no one can share, which is 365 P5. And you would divide that by the total number of possible birthdays you can have, which is 365 to the fifth. Okay, and plug that into your calculator and you will get 0.972, I think I'll round to four decimals, so 0.9729. Now that's the probability no one shares. 
So the probability that somebody shares, which is again, that was the whole point of this problem, the probability that someone shares, oops, someone shares is going to equal 1 minus the probability that no one shared. And that's going to equal 0 0.0271. So you got a little bit under a 3% chance from five people, 3% chance that somebody's going to share a birthday. Okay, so let's take a look at this a little bit more closely, see if we can figure out a formula here. Now, no matter what, no matter how many people you have, there are always going to be 365 birthdays. In fact, the only thing that's ever going to change in this problem will be this number right here. All right, this number represents the number of people. Okay, everything else will stay the same. So if I want to know the probability no one shares with 17 people, which is my original problem, I could just use this formula. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our formula. Let's write that down over here. So our formula for the probability that someone shares. So probability that someone shares. Could share with one person could share with two people, five people, 17 people could share. It really doesn't matter as long as somebody's sharing. And that formula is going to be 1 minus 365PR divided by 365 to the R. Now, what's R? R stands for the number of people in your group. Okay, so let's go back to our original problem with 17. So if we have 17 people, all right, so let's take this here. That's going to be 1 minus 365P17 divided by 365 to the 17th. So let's take out the graph and calculator, and let's compute that. So let's bring in mine right here. So we have 1 minus oops, 3, oops, let me put this in parentheses here. So 365, get out the MPR, 17 divided by 365 to the 17th. And we'll get 0 0.3150. So 0 0.3150. And there you go. That is the probability that of 17 people, in a group of 17, somebody's going to share a birthday with somebody else or more than one. All right. So then say you had a group of 23. Well, no, let's do, yeah, let's do 23, 23 people. That's then going to be 1 minus 365P23 divided by 365 to the 17th, oops, sorry, 23rd. And that's going to be 0 0.507. Okay, so about a 50% chance with 23 people. Let's see what happens when you go on to 50 people. Well, that's going to be 1 minus 365P50 divided by 365 to the 50th. Now, this one you may not be able to put in your calculator because of an overflow, but if you do find a way of doing it, maybe in Excel, the probability will be 9.970. So it's about a 97% chance that somebody in a group of 50 will share a birthday with someone else or more than one, basically anybody can share a birthday. Uh, so it's very likely that with 50 people and then it just keeps getting larger and larger